guys. Uh, we're doing a little brewing today. The deep drill pet cycle from the Masso. Uh, we're going to be making this as our top plate. It's going to be for the delayed CNC upgrade. Uh, we're getting pretty deep with the one inch thick for the aluminum plate. Staying pretty deep on it. We've already went through and done our spot drill. And we're going to come back and do an adaptive clearing with a 3 16th two fluid in mill. pattern here on the Masso. Uh, we forgot to turn the smoothing on so there's like 11,000 lines of code that uh, we're going to run through. Alright, well this is just one part of the video. I'll probably blend them all together later. Alright, well we got all the holes drilled and we got uh, some of them pocketed. Four of them there. So here we go. Down there pretty deep with the little uh, 316 in there, two feet. We're running uh, 10 inches a minute, we're looking in at 2 degrees. And then the final little bit of the hole is uh, like 12 inches a minute. Or 20 inches a minute, sorry. And so we're getting there pretty deep, so we put a little bit in there. Alright. We'll bring you back and show you what we got in a little bit. Hey guys, uh, we got our uh, top plate finished. We're doing the uh, side plate for the apron now with the ball screw nut. We've already drilled the two front holes based off the top. We're drilling the uh, four bolt holes for the ball screw nut. Going to bolt on like that. It's going to go over here to the face. This is our top plate and our slide. The uh, That apron bolts on in here and here. The ball screw nut's gonna be in behind. So uh, it's coming together. I think what we did find out is we're gonna have to move these two rails back one more hole to get the distance and travel that we want. So sounds like Brian's changed some tools already. We got the drilling cycle done. Now we're gonna do a uh, 3 16 end mill. Uh, the Masso's uh, sitting here. It's been running pretty good this evening other than some operator error on my part. Uh, it definitely doesn't like dull drill bits. The Z height had enough power that we had to re-square the mill head. It shoved the mill head up out of position. Didn't break anything, but I will put a picture of it. We did dislocate the... Uh, drill chuck out of the Jacob's taper. Uh, it was pretty rough. Uh, drill bit stopped spinning. Z height didn't slow down. It just came right on up and we didn't break anything. So, all right, so here we go. We're gonna take off and do this small end mill. It's a 2D adaptive clearing strategy because we didn't have an end mill the size we wanted to make these holes. So we're going down in, helicing in two degrees, and then uh, cutting the hole size. So we're glad to have the mill back. We just about forgot how to run it. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, getting it back to the for us. So. Anyway, there we are. Shell mill. This is my eBay special shell mill still. No WD-40 on it. It sure cuts a pretty surface. No one runs it really slow. 1300 RPM at 30 inches a minute, which is slow for for what we usually do to it. get to run this thing very often, but when we do, we like the video, you know. And there she is. 
Finish part. All right, guys, we'll catch you later. Hey, fellas, uh, got the old trusty dusty uh, Craftsman drill here. This runs uh, 1,350 RPM. Our servo motor is going to turn uh, 2,500 and something. So this is the 1,200 or 1,300 mark. That's decently fast. I mean, it ain't. But we're going to go another third at least. So uh, we're kind of excited about how fast this little fella is going to run. Anyway, we got our side apron plate put on. We got our top one mounted with the trucks, nice and smooth. We got to change out these bolts to some cap heads. But other than that, we've got the ball screw mount for the nut down here on the uh, on the next one. So we are, uh, I think we're ready. We just uh, was testing out the screw. We got it mounted in there with uh, the four bolts here, but. There's still only one screw holding it in the nut back in, in behind there. So we're ready to, we're, we're getting closer to making parts. Uh, we're going to put our tool post right on this corner. Um, well, anyway, that'll be it for now. You guys have a good night. We'll talk to you later.
looks like a uh, finished pass. Catch you guys in a little bit. Hey fellas, uh, we're gonna make this pocket. We've been working on this little lathe. We've got the uh, the uh, carriage set up ready. We uh, we actually slid these back one hole. We're gonna make a mount that goes in here that comes out and steps out to mount the bearing block for the motor. Uh, we've got this uh, all set up over here on the uh, on the masso. You can see the tool path set up there uh, we're gonna be doing uh, just about every operation that uh, that you can think of we're gonna do some 2d adaptive some contour passes some drilling operations spot drilling operations so we're gonna set you up on the tripod and uh, take you guys with us on this one uh, this took us about an hour hour and 15 20 minutes to draw up and measure and get it set up with the cam it's probably our most complicated part so far. So uh, here we go. Uh, we'll see if we crash her off the get-go. Uh, it's already reloaded, we'll hit Control S, start from line zero, and we're in gear and everything looks good. We're running, uh, the first one's gonna be about uh, 1300 RPM on the face. So let me uh, get back over here. We like to uh, put this thing in F11. If you hit, uh, it's asking for the shell mill there. So we're gonna say, yeah, the shell mill's in there. And what we do is we go to F11 and it changes it to feed override. And then that makes our wheel here, we can adjust it. We can slow it down, we can get back up to 100%. That way if we're gonna crash, we can help minimize that just a little. We always bring it into the first part slow just because, yeah. That looks better. I'll tell you, I know I've talked about this shell mill in prior videos, but this thing for the money is way, way better than a fly cutter, in my opinion. It cuts so much smoother, so much wider. It's not as hard on our spindle drive. So, all right, what are we doing next? Next, we're gonna do the spot drilling operation, so. All right, so the Masso is asking us for the uh, spot drill as soon as we get her snug down. All right, so here we go. These are going to be spot drilled to a depth of about 50 thousandths. Makers of 
turtle bait holes. Our next one, we're going to be doing the drill, the deep drill cycle with full retract. Uh, we're going to be running the drill, I think, at 3,000 RPM. It's 1164 drill. Where these holes will be uh, drilled or tapped to a uh, five millimeter thread size. So here we're going to go on to the next one. Chuck was getting pretty close. The hole that we're drilling right now is really uh, nothing more than uh, it's going to be in the bottom of our pocket. As a drain hole, um, we put it in there in the bottom of our pocket just to surely so it'll drain uh, and drain out if we get anything in it. Running uh, 3,000 RPM and drilling at nine inches a minute. got four holes left we're gonna drill them with a uh, sorry about that we kicked the camera stand we're gonna drill them with a uh, 1364 drill bit all right well the master is asking for tool number 25 and that's it right there so 
We'll drill the last four holes. I'm gonna stop here for just a second. I'm gonna knock this parallel out of the way. Hopefully she'll sit still for us. So we'll start back up here. A little close, we don't wanna tear the parallel up. These are going to get tapped to a six millimeter by one. What do we uh, do to pocket the contour, the adaptive clearing? Uh, we're going to do another setup on this and do all the outside contouring. Um, our adaptive clearing for the pocket uh, will be next. So we're going to uh, we're going to heal up the wind at 12 degrees and run it at 80 inches a minute for the adaptive clearing. So that ought to keep it pretty busy. I think with the 80,000 step over. takes that one little chip out. We've got it in our mist coolant. We're just trying not to run it while we're uh, videoing some of this stuff. second setup we're going to cut out that whole back corner over in this area it will all be cut out uh, and this area will be thin right where we're drilling it'll be thin down to I think it's 12 millimeters thick when we're finished with 13 Our tool two. This is the uh, Lakeshore Carbide Taz three flute, three eighths. Uh, three eighths end mill. It's a rougher for aluminum. This thing we've we've ran up to. If I remember right in our testing of it, we actually ran 150 inches a minute with this, but down in the pocket we like to run it a little slower. Um, all right, well, here we go. Want a little air blast? So this helical ramp rate is pretty, pretty aggressive. I think there's only, uh, four or five, uh, spirals in so
That didn't last long. More lube, I think. 